Uh, like Josh said, my name's Patsy Maroney. I'm the Interim Community Mediation Program Coordinator. Woo, big title. <laughs> I sound so important. Huh? But uh, <laughs> in your handbooks, let me tell you where we're going to be hanging out for a little bit. You're going to see some dark green pages followed by an incredibly pink piece of paper and then a rather nice bright blue. <laughs> so those are the areas where um, that, uh, that I'll be at. The green is just copies of my slides and the others are some things that uh, you may want to look at later um, and go from there. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is actually the very first part of your landlord or of your book here is a copy of the landlord tenant handbook that is out on the neighborhood services website right now. Um, how many of you have ever referenced this? Couple? Have you found it helpful? Okay. One thing is that uh, it is a little dated. We've had some turnover in the position over the last couple years, and so it is, uh, the last update on it was in 2010. So the only thing I would caution you on, and I would caution you on this anyway, is this should not be a substitute for legal advice. If there are certain specific things, like some of the questions you guys have had have been really good questions, but you may need to talk to a lawyer to make sure that you're um, doing what's okay you know we just may not know okay but it's a great resource um, if nothing else it can give you a sense of the types of things how many of you are, are fairly new to the landlord business okay and didn't it sound like such a great idea at first you were like going oh, this is gonna be a great idea some people are going no I never really thought it was gonna be a great idea <laughs> But um, like many things, it's a lot more complicated than any of us ever realize until we get in the middle of it. Then it's like, oh, <laughs> dang, <laughs> what, what, what did I get myself into? So um, what I really like about it is it does kind of walk you through all the pieces that you at least need to think about and to try and address. And even in a perfect world where you are sure you have the best lease that ever hit the face of the earth, <sighs> things will happen <laughs> and and people will say things like or your tenants will say things like well that's not how I interpreted that here's what I thought you meant blah 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 and you're like uh-uh <laughs> not what I wanted to have happen so you know you learn <laughs> it's all good <laughs> so I'm glad it's a good resource we are it's very high on the priority list to get updated just to make sure, I mean, some of the newer programs that Lynn was talking about a few minutes ago aren't even in here because they've just happened really in the last several months. And so we wanna make sure we keep it as up to date as we can. And uh, so, but then we have to get it through the city attorney's office and all that good stuff. So uh, an update will come soon, but um, you're still good if nothing else uh, with what we got for you. So the, the main idea, of the landlord tenant handbook. It was first put together by uh, the mediation program and neighborhood uh, resources, it used to be called, uh, several years back. It's just to help you protect yourselves from th some of the pitfalls. Because as landlords, sometimes you have some liabilities that you may not really know about. And so it's just a way that we can hopefully give you information that will help you protect yourself. Um, and it also is just a reminder for you to be as reasonable as you can with your tenants. Now, your tenants may not always be that reasonable with you, and that's a whole different issue. <laughs> but um, to just lay it out there that, you know, there is some parameters that you may want to consider as far as uh, looking at what your tenants, and just knowing your rights and responsibilities going from there. But I, I think one of the things that is uppermost for everybody is communication. You can't write that into a, into a lease. You can try. You can say, please talk to me. <laughs> say, pretty please talk to me. You can say, you will tell me what's going on. <laughs> and they either will or they won't. But really, everybody appreciates good communication. You like it when they talk to you. 
and let you know if there's things. They like it if you talk to them. Or maybe they hide when you try to talk to them. I don't know. But um, being able to learn to communicate with people, especially when you don't necessarily agree with them, is an art. So give yourself a break. If you've had trouble with certain tenants who just, no matter how hard you try to talk to them, they're like the little, oh yeah, everything's great, and then they don't go off and do whatever it is that they're doing that's driving you crazy. Um, you know, communication can be hard. People don't always trust. And you wanna trust people, and then you get stomped on. And so the next person who comes along, you're like going, mm, I don't know about you. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna trust you or not. But communication is one of those things that when it breaks down, things go very badly, very quickly, or sometimes slowly. But either way, it can go very badly. A lot of times when communication breaks down, and this is just human nature. Um, in fact, I got a call the other day where somebody said, well, can't you just do this for me? Because I'd like to avoid conflict. Like, well, you and everybody else on the planet, dude. I mean, um, <laughs> of course, I did not say that. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I, I would love it if somebody would take care of all my conflicts for me and it would be fine. Um, but it doesn't happen, so. Who do you end up calling? Sometimes you go to City Hall, you try and find the best lawyer on the planet who will smash that person who, uh, who dare to do whatever it is they did. Um, or you call the police. And a lot of times, those are appropriate responses. If somebody's doing something illegal, you should call the police. There's nothing wrong with that. And if they try to make you feel bad because you called the police, because they were doing something illegal, guess what? They're in the wrong. At any rate, what I want you to remember is that these aren't your only options. We do have this community mediation program. Now, the way community mediation works, and Dylan started to refer to this earlier, is you would call me, or they would call me, and say, I'm really having this problem with my landlord. I'm really having this problem with my tenant. I'm really having this problem with my roommate. I'm really having this problem with these stupid neighbors next door. <laughs> you know, the people who are smoking and I can't even go and open my windows. Um, if both sides are willing to sit in the same room and problem solve it, then we have volunteer mediators who have been trained in how to help people have tough conversations in a way that's productive. And it can be incredibly helpful, you know, because when we get caught up in our own emotions, you may have heard this like a hundred times in your life, is that fight or flight or freeze kicks in, which basically means if you think of your brain as a computer, it's like somebody turns off the thinking part of your brain and the emotional part of your brain is like, okay, I am now in charge <laughs> and I'm gonna react and I'm gonna be angry and I'm gonna be defensive and I'm gonna be afraid and I'm gonna make sure I intimidate you before you intimidate me. All of that great cognitive intellectual side of your brain kind of goes on vacation for a while. <laughs> Comes back later and says, what were you thinking? Well, you weren't. The, um, there are two different types of cases that we are able to take through mediation. And her question was, is there a charge? So this is free. It is confidential. So the only time we would charge for a mediation is if there was an animal control ticket involved. Because a lot of times, the cases we get come directly from people. You know, I'm, I'm not getting along with so-and-so for whatever reason. And they're, you know, the details are all different. We also get some referrals from municipal court on some of the uh, animal control tickets. Because more often than not, when somebody's calling about somebody's barking dog, it isn't just the dog. It isn't just the cat without the leash. It isn't, you know, just the, the chicken. <laughs> There's an underlying 
feeling of disrespect, of not feeling heard, or something that's going on. So municipal court will sometimes say this one's eligible for mediation. And if that's the case, then the defendant pays a $50 fee, but the other person doesn't. But for all of the community mediation type situations, they would be free. Uh, question is, what kind of training do the mediators have? They have a baseline 40-hour mediation certificate training that they have to complete that is uh, part of, there's a group in Colorado called uh, Mediator Mediation Association of Colorado, or the MAC, and that is the baseline professional level um, uh, training that uh, you have to have in order to be a mediator. We also do clinics during the year for our mediators on different topics to make sure that they keep their skills up. So, so that's the baseline, and a lot of our mediators have been doing it for a while or have done it in other business settings, and so they do have some good background on it. Uh, her question was, for mediation, do you apply to the court, and then does the court um, pick the mediators for you? Um, the court does do mediations for things like divorces and, and other civil um, lawsuits. Our program, you can just come to us directly and say, I would like to request mediation services for, you know, this situation that I find myself in. And then during the intake, we can figure out whether or not it's appropriate for our mediators to help you with that. Her, um, her point was that sometimes she's found that even mentioning that mediation is an option to her tenants has kind of opened the door to the type of conversation that needed to happen in the first place and that that's been helpful. And you know, actually a lot of times, oh, let me do this last point and then I'll tell you. Um, in our mediations, the way they go is that we set aside a two hour period of time. And then again, our mediators help people have that conversation. Both sides get a chance to get heard. We do it in a uh, neutral setting to ensure safety for both sides um, so that each side is able, hopefully willing, <laughs> but able to say what they need to say and then move forward. Okay, let's get future focused now. How can you guys create your own win-win solution? Mediators are not judges. We don't decide. We just help you guys have the conversation so you can decide. And, and so if you do create an agreement, we will help you write it up, everybody signs it, gets copy, and off you go your merry way. Though the Colorado courts have found that mediated agreements are, quote, enforceable. Not by me, <laughs> but by you. So it's not all that different than a, your lease. You've created an enforceable document. When you sign something, they sign it, and you can now hold them accountable for it. But you may have to go through the courts in order to do that question is about uh, what's time frame? How long does it take to get mediation set up? It really depends on people's schedules. And so what we'll do is once, let's say we've talked and I say, yeah, this would be great. I ask you when you're available. I call the person you want to mediate with and they say, yeah, that would be good. I'd like to do it. When are you available? And then I check with our volunteers. When are you available? We try to get it done as quick as we can. It can take several weeks. You know, because sometimes somebody will call me and say, oops, I'm going out of town for two weeks. So it, it can be sh as short or as long as it takes to get everybody together. Question is, are the mediators doing this for free? And the answer is yes. They are volunteers. This is part of their, generally speaking, all of our mediators are very committed to mediation and want to donate their skills to the city in order to help create better neighborhoods and better relationships for people. And so we really do have an awesome set of volunteers. And so they, they do it for free. They're not like representing the city. They're just there to help you have the conversation. Okay. So by confidential, what I mean is, if you call me and I'm a mediator and 
I am talking to you about certain things and you express your frustrations and you're calling people names because that happens, you know, that, that jerk <laughs> or whatever it is you might be saying. Then I talk to your neighbor or your person and they go, yeah, but blah, 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 yeah, 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 I mean, and they're, they're not very nice either. Okay. I don't share that information. That when you're talking to me, it's confidential. When they're talking to me, it's confidential. When we have the mediation session itself, anything that is said during that session is confidential. The Colorado Dispute Resolution Act allows for and protects, if you will, mediators from being called to testify. We are not discoverable. The only thing that can be brought into a court of law later if things, if the agreement falls apart, is the agreement itself. So you could not subpoena me to say, please come and testify that this guy was a jerk and was calling me bad names. That won't happen. And I cannot voluntarily disclose anything that's said to me in a mediation discussion. So that's what the confidentiality piece is. Some of the more common ones that I've seen in landlord-tenant situations, and you know, there's also the neighbor pieces, but you know, let's say they've signed a year lease, they're driving you crazy, <laughs> you're driving them crazy, you want them to go away. <laughs> and all those things that you put in your lease that prevents them from going away uh, for the first year, you would like to say, I'm done, get out of here, <laughs> you know. So you can renegotiate the lease, if you will. You can terminate it early through a mediation. Uh, you can modify a lease if you want to. I mean, you know, it's kind of up to you guys. Uh, clarifying expectations. Here's what you're going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Shovel the snow, dang it. <laughs> it's not that hard. Here's a shovel, that kind of thing. Uh, security deposit disputes are a big one, a little after the fact thing, where it's, uh, they will come to me and say, well, I didn't realize I was going to get charged for this, that, and the other thing. And of course, then when I talk to you, I'm like, oh, it was very clear in the lease. And maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, doesn't matter. You can still have a discussion, a mediation about it. Roommate conflicts. Now, I actually got a, a, a pretty good question from the group that Josh was telling you about the landlord group. They had me come and do a discussion. And uh, the landlord was like, well, I was trying, I had these two tenants who were not getting along, you know, within the same household. So I was trying to mediate it. I was doing this. I was trying to get a hold of the neighbors next door because they were also pulled into it and all this stuff. And I'm like, why are you in the middle of this? This is not your problem. It doesn't have to be your problem. You can do what this lady did over here. Say, why don't you go talk to the mediation program? They could probably help you with that. Because if you don't want to play mommy and daddy, you know, to roommates who aren't getting along, now kids, you know, they're touching my side of the apartment, you know, um, you don't have to do that. You can send them to us. Now you can say things like, if you guys don't figure this out, I might kick both of you out of here, not sure. But you don't have to be in the middle playing, uh, playing fixer. So why should you consider mediation? I always try to, you know, people are, well, it's free, it's confidential, it's, you know, a great way to, you know, clear up old uh, mis misinterpretations, misassumptions. You'd be amazed how many neighbor disputes come down to somebody looked at me bad the first day I moved in here. They gave me a dirty look and they hate me and I've hated them ever since. It's like, wow, you don't even know if that dirty look was coming at you or if they you know, had a pain in the side or something. I mean, it, it's amazing how small misunderstandings amplified over time can be horrendous and hard to get over. So here's kind of the things that are in it for you. It, it could reduce your stress. It's like, phew, I don't have to deal with this anymore. I don't have to figure it out. It is free and confidential. We have trained impartial mediators. It's a way to potentially avoid uh, litigation and court costs. 
You know, if you know you've got a dispute going, to be able to really sit down with somebody and say, look, let's just figure this out. Rather than, although I've had someone call me once and say, I'll spend $10,000 in legal fees to squash this person. I'm like, really? Why? Okay. Why are you calling me then? <laughs> you know, no, I shouldn't say that. But it's, it's sad. Why waste the resources for yourself? You know, and then you can find that common ground. You can be heard respectfully. Because maybe that's what it is, is they don't understand your side of things, and they're making assumptions about you. And you don't understand their side of things, and you're making assumptions about them. Wow. How can you communicate about that and maybe be able to let it go? Okay. Again, resolve current conflict. You can read. I'm not going to read all these to you. But um, mediation can be pretty amazing. I have seen cases that... I was surprised that I got both the people in the room, you know? And I'm just sitting there going, you know, <laughs> hoping it will go well. And they walk out smiling, shaking hands, hugging. I'm like, whoa, you know? <laughs> that's what, as a mediator, that's what keeps me going. You know, there's plenty of times where people are stuck in their conflict and they can't get out of it. They don't want to get out of it. They won't get out of it. And there's times where about halfway through the session, after they've yelled at each other for a little bit, then they sit there and see each other as human beings who are both trying to do the best they can. And then they're like, okay, you're right. Gosh, that happened to me once too. Dang, you're human, I'm human, let's fix it. So some other things that we do is uh, if you're gonna maybe write a letter to somebody, maybe your tenant, or, or you're not sure that you're wording it in a way that <laughs> you can almost, no matter what you do, somebody can misinterpret it. But if you would like me to take a look at it and just give you my impressions, because I obviously don't know your situation, I can tell you whether I would interpret it a certain way or how languaging could be maybe changed to try and steer somebody's reaction in a certain way. We can do that. We do conflict coaching because sometimes somebody will come to me and say, I really want to mediate with this person. I call that person, they say, please, no way, I will not be in the same building with them. <laughs> Okie dokie, I'm not gonna make them. <laughs> but I can coach the person who approached me in the first place and say, well, here's some ideas. Why don't you try this? Maybe if you tried that. Here are some options. That's something we can do. I can also kind of give you a reality check. Let's say you have this lease that you are so sure is incredibly clear, and there's no way anybody could misinterpret it. I'd be more than happy to look at it and see if I interpret it the same way you do. You know? Because maybe it's not that clear. And, uh, or any kind of language around that. We also can do shuttle mediation. Maybe that person I just talked about a minute ago, who, yeah, I really want to resolve this issue with that person. When I call that person, they say, boy, I would love to resolve this too, but they scare me. I do not want to be in the same building with them. Okay. Well, I can do a little bit of a shuttle back and forth. I will not play punching bag. <laughs> or our mediators will not play punching bag. But we can try and do a bit of a mediation on that side of, OK, well, what do you think about this? Oh, I like this. I like that. But I don't like this part. OK, go back over here. They like this. They like this. But they don't like this part. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. i got to have that. Or maybe I could give that up, that kind of thing. So we might be able to help with that. There's also just a whole range of restorative type processes that uh, since we are connected with the restorative justice program, which uh, Delin started to talk about, um, that maybe it's going to take more than one session. Maybe it's like a whole neighborhood that, you know, or a block. I ha I've had this kind of conflict come to us, too, where everybody on the block gets along except that one person. <laughs> and you're saying to yourself, oh, yeah, I know that. 
In fact, I'm that person. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you might be, you might not be. <laughs> but how can you kind of restore that sense of community with people? You know, because there's the curmudgeon over in the corner going, blah, 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 blah. you're all a bunch of jerks and I'm calling the cops all the time, no matter what. Even though the cops are going, oh my God, don't call us again, please. <laughs> Which they, you know, sort of can't tell you because, you know, you're a citizen, you're paying your taxes and all that good stuff. But um, there's also times where the cops are like going, this is not a legal thing. This is not a law. Learn to get along. Talk to the jerk, you know? <laughs> or if, if you're the jerk, stop being the jerk. <laughs> and uh, I will get referrals from police on that sometimes too. Question, she lives in Fort Collins, but her rental property is in a different city. I can only do, our program can only do mediations for properties that exist in the city limits of Fort Collins. I could, if nobody was listening, <laughs> uh, give you a little conflict coaching but I wouldn't be able to offer mediation services. That's, that's one of our parameters, is that the property has to be in city limits. Good question. Her question is, you know, how do I deal with property managers and the absentee landlord? Who do you negotiate with? Try to negotiate with whoever the problem is between. So if the tenant is having an issue with the property manager, and the property manager is saying, well, but that's what the landlord wants done, um, might be able to engage a bit more of a three-way dialogue if we can get a hold of absentee landlord. Um, or we just try and do the best we can with whoever will um, is willing to participate. And sometimes it's just a, you know, well, here's some conflict coaching, here's some ideas, good luck with that <laughs> kind of thing. Um, just call me and we can talk through it. And if it's something we can do, we will. And because uh, a lot of times there are these layers and it's a bit of an octopus, you know. I've had some homeowners associations call me and say, you know, I want to send a couple of our residents to you <laughs> or our owners to you. I, I, send me anybody. Um, and if it is multi-layer, we'll just kind of look at it and say, well, here's what we can do, here's what we can't do. Where do you want to try and go from there? You know, if you can get people in the room 95% of the times we can get them in the room with the mediators, there's an agreement that's reached. Now, I've even had ones where they didn't reach an agreement, they didn't want to sign anything, but they walked out of there shaking hands. That, to me, is success. So, yeah, it's, you know, sometimes even long-term I had one guy who I uh, was calling to see if he would mediate with his neighbor who he'd lived next to for like 25 years. And they'd hated each other probably since day one. Um, that, that as I'm calling him saying, hey, your neighbor would really like to, to mediate with you, would like to meet with you, would like to bury the hatchet. You know, I, I call him, sometimes I call it creating a peace treaty, you know, of some sort. How are we going to live? next to each other. And this guy goes, eh, I'm too old to change. Well, okay. But that's a choice he's making. And if he, at whatever point, and sometimes, I, I like to say this too, sometimes we're just planting the seed. They might not want to do it now. But later it might be their idea. Well, maybe we should go to mediation, you know, now that it's my idea. I don't care. <laughs> However we can get people in there, if, if people are willing to let go of that anger and let go of that persona of, no, I am the curmudgeon. I get to be the person who tells everybody else on the planet how they're screwed up. <laughs> you know, It can't make somebody let go of that, but if they're willing to let go of it, it's kind of hard not to hear somebody who's being honest with you and being respectful. To you. You know, it's hard to hang on to that <laughs> grumpy, grumpy thing. People are good at it though. <laughs> they have a lot of practice. How many of you ever been through a mediation that really stunk? Yeah. 
It's hard to get excited about mediation if you've been through one and it didn't go well. I've had a couple people say that. You say, I don't know, I did mediation once. It was not pretty. <laughs> but um, I, I can't guarantee you that this will be pretty, but I can guarantee you that we'll try. You know, I think there's just some things that aren't fixable, to tell you the truth. I mean, I would never tell somebody who was coming into mediation that because then they might just totally give up and say, forget it, why bother? Maybe this is one of those. But I think that's the thing that we as mediators, when we debrief afterwards, you know, we always, we try to get together and kind of say, here's how this one went, here's how that one went. Boy, I wish I'd thought of this in the moment. Because you're in the moment and you're trying to make sure that you're doing the best thing that you can. And so, eh, mediators make mistakes too. I think it's, it can be a lot of different factors for different people. It could be such a deep hurt that, uh, and people don't like to admit that they're hurt that deep, that they're not willing to let it go. Or it could just be, I don't know, without, without getting too overly philosophical about it, you know. But uh, sometimes, like I say, I've been very surprised at ones that I was sitting there going, whoo, I don't know about this one, and it, it went fine. It went better than fine. They had like a fabulous um, agreement. Also had one, <laughs> I'll tell you this story, just because we have a, another minute or two, um, that it was a neighbor who was an owner, a neighbor who was a renter, and you know, for various reasons, they weren't getting along. And so the neighbor who was an owner said, I wish you would just move out and you know, break your lease. I'll talk to your landlord, see if he'll let you break your lease and leave, move out. And I'm like going, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. And the guy goes, okay, that works for me. I want out of here too. Not the type of agreement that we as mediators want, <laughs> but they both were happy with it. It's like, Okay, again, I'm not making the decision for you. It's that win-win piece. What's gonna work for both of them? Um, I, I always hope for sunshine and flowers and gummy bears, you know, that everybody's really getting along afterwards, but it is what it is. So here's my contact information. If you think of other questions, if you think of situations where I could be helpful, we have little brochures I can send you, you know, that if you wanna give to your tenants, if, uh, if you want to discuss anything a little more in depth, uh, please get a hold of me and we'll see what we can do for you because I, you know, there's not a lot of, I have to kind of give kudos to the city of Fort Collins on this, there's not a lot of communities out there who provide this type of service. And so it's, it's pretty cool to be part of it and to at least feel like, from my perspective, and I think I speak for our volunteers, we kind of feel like we're planting little seeds of good stuff. <laughs>